Hello and welcome back to the YouTube gaming stage right here at PAX Prime. I'm Danny Dwyer from GameSpot. It's my last appointment of the day, my last interview. Uh, but what a wonderful person to get to talk to, Mr. Randy Pitchford. Sir, how are you doing? Hey man, how's it going? Good to see you. How are things? I'm living the dream, man. Yeah. We are here at PAX, my, my favorite show of all. Yeah. This is, uh, because this is a consumer show. PAX exists for gamers. Yeah. You know, like you go to E3, they don't even let gamers in. No, it's exactly. just for press and, and retailers. This is what video gaming is all mm. about, and, and board gaming too, which is yeah. another passion of mine. So I'm just super psyched to be here. So you spend at least oh no, there you go. So you spend uh, at least one day doing actual work, and then tomorrow is predominantly you enjoying the fruits of packs yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is I have off pretty much. So <laughs> I've got a couple of uh, like meetings, but uh, I'm just gonna play all day tomorrow. Um, I end up buying way too much stuff when I'm here, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's awesome to be at PAX. A lot of cool games here. Yeah, of uh, one of them, of course, Battleborn. You guys have a massive booth downstairs. Yes. A bunch of playable stations for people to enjoy. Uh, what's it like actually getting it in front of people? Because a game like this pre presumably requires a lot of fine touching and balancing. So watching people play must really well. It's help super that. awesome to watch. But you know, that's one of the things that I I, I think we really thought about when we designed and created Battleborn was, you know, our last game, Borderlands, really requires a huge time investment to get the most yeah. out of it. Whereas Battleborn is a hobby, but it's fun in the first five minutes. Mm. And we really wanted an accessible, easy to get into game. And, and Battleborn is that. And, and it's such a thrill. I mean, I, I feel bad because the line is intense. Right, yeah. They're like, you know, people are waiting two and three hours to play the game, and I feel bad about that. But it's so awesome to be able to come here and introduce people to the universe of Battleborn, where all of these factions are fighting over the last star. Mm. You know, in the you can imagine at the end of the universe when there's one star left, what happens to that star means everything. And there are all these different creatures that, that have the capability of traveling the stars and ending up at the last stars. They're, they're all gonna have different opinions about what to do. Some will want to protect it, some will want to study it and maybe like figure out how to make more stars or mm. make it last longer. And their disagreements will be profound because they're talking about the end of the universe. So the battle for what, how to handle this is probably the biggest stakes ever. And, uh, and the, the, the heroes and champions that, that do the fighting, these are the battleborn, and that's what the game's all about. You guys must really love being able to start with a fresh slate. You're, like, you've done it so many times, but like, obviously, like, back when you started off doing like, Half-Life expansions, but then like, all through Brothers in Arms, and Borderlands was like this fresh like, IP that yeah. you got to start off and enjoy. So is, is it nice going back to the start? Or is I'll it tell you what, I, I know, I, I, I think we exist to entertain people. And I think the future is always more exciting than the past. Mm. And, is, and, and, and the challenge for us, though, is we love the things we create, right? So when we created the Brothers in Arms franchise, we went neck deep into that. Like, I was just living, mm. eating, breathing World War II history yeah. and tactical gameplay. And, uh, and I'm so, I you know, fell in love with it. And so what's neat is now that we've created that, we can attend to it. And, and we will be getting back to more Brothers in Arms. But if we only did that for the rest of our careers, then... Right there would be no Borderlands, yeah. right? So I remember when we were first talking about Borderlands and sharing it, people were like, why are you doing that? You should be doing more Brothers in Arms, <laughs> right? And, and now we're creating Bo Battleborn, and there's a lot of folks that's like, hey, make more Borderlands, and we will, <laughs> and we love Borderlands, but I, I think we figured some things out, and I think we've learned some things, and, and I, think, I think Battleborn's a better game, and I really hope that, that people find it and enjoy it, because we're just, we're having a blast making it. Mm. Uh, it's uh, totally unique in terms of when you, especially when you put it up against something like Brothers in Arms, and in, especially with Borderlands as well, because that's a game that has a loop which, you know, it lasts for hours and hours and days and days, and this is a much more sort of a, it's like that compacted into like a, a smaller segment. Um, but also, there's a lot of these games coming out now, or like it seems like there's a lot of similar games. Like Cliff Blazinski here earlier. Yeah, showing off the game, my which friend like, Cliff finally announced his game. <laughs> Um, yeah, he was giving you shit about having a mushroom man in the game, is what he said, <laughs> apparently. Uh, but like that, like Overwatch, the games that like, at least on first appearance, seem like they have a lot going on. Is that something that you've, or similar things? I that? love the fact that, that, that oh man, I, when, when Overwatch was announced, I mm. danced on the table. For two reasons. One, <laughs> it looks really cool. But two, you know, when we first started Battleborn, we were so off on our own. There was nothing at all that yeah. we thought, you know, and, and a lot of folks, including myself, wondered, are we crazy? Are people going to like this? If Blizzard shows up doing something kind of similar, it's like, mm. okay, maybe we're not completely nuts. But, but let's be fair, these are very different games. Mm. Battleborn is a full-featured game. There is a campaign 
There's a story mode. You can play it solo. You can play it cooperative. Of course, there's a, PP, a PvP competitive mode where you can play it uh, against people in an esports capacity. So we do have that component. But the other thing is that it's a, launching as a full featured game that isn't trying to be a free to play model. Yeah. It's launching, you know, you buy it and that you have it. You don't have to worry about, you know, a free to play kind of thing going on here. Um, if you if you buy Battleborn, you get the content that, that comes with it. Now, of course, you know if you if you played Borderlands, you know that that we like to do things in our universe, and our fans tend to be beg and demand mm. for more. So it's almost certain that we'll do DLC and add-ons for Battleborn. But if you're not into that, it's fine. It's a complete game. It's a robust mm. game, and it's and, it, and it's the value of what's inside. We've really worked hard to make sure that there's more value inside than than you know what what it seems you would expect for for the for the price that the games cost. And we've been able to do that because we're kind of betting that we're going to reach a lot of people. Yeah. But we also did really well with Borderlands, and so we're able to invest a lot in this. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands launched with four characters. Battleborn launches with 25 characters. <laughs> and unlike Borderlands, uh, where you to experience the full power of a character, you, you, you need to invest about 50 hours. In Battleborn, you will experience the full growth curve of a character within about you know, within that, that single scenario, whether it's a campaign scenario or a PvP scenario. So within that, you know, 20 to 40 minute scenario, you will get the maximum level of that character and feel its full power and capability. Now, of course, there's customizations beyond that, and there's a metagame beyond that, mm. but if you wanted to sample all of the characters in the game and understand what they're about, you could do that in about, you know, 12 or 15 hours. Yeah. And, and that's awesome because there's so much value in the experience of the characters. I mean, we're investing about four times as much in each character that we're developing for Battleborn than we invested in each character we've built for Borderlands. And a massive spread of characters as well. And indeed, one of the things when I think about like the Borderlands community, which is like this crazy... Isn't that awesome here at PAX to see so many like cosplayers? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, they're amazing. And, and for you guys who are developing games for like a long period of time, yeah. like the, the success of Borderlands must have really changed the way you guys approach like your communities and development, like did you, there are aspects of Battleborn that it looks like you guys have learned a lot from the experience of making this game which really captured a lot of people's hearts I'd, and minds. I'd like to think we are getting better at it. I'd like to think that each time we make games that we learn some things and we apply those lessons to do better. Um, but you know, it, it is a dynamic process and we also take risks hmm. and not every risk we take everyone likes but we're gonna try and fight, but I love the community aspect. And, and we've always be, been really engaged with our communities, even in our first game, which was Half-Life Opposing Force, uh, long after the game shipped, and not you know because we, we didn't even make any money doing it, we created Half-Life CTF, mm. Half-Life Capture the Flag, just because we wanted to engage and have fun and play the game with, our, with, our, with the fans and people in the community. Borderlands, of course, created a passionate fan base that is, awesome and insane and much larger than anything I'd ever experienced mm. before. And that, of course, has helped Borderlands grow to new levels. And I can only hope that, that people respond as well to, to Battleborn. And we're doing everything we can to try to you know, give people reasons for engaging with it. But it's, it's part of the fun when it happens. And I really, I really look forward to seeing what unfolds. Yeah, and it must be fun to see people uh, getting hands on with it downstairs. Oh, well. man, it's so great to you know, work so hard to build a thing and then to be able to share it. It's terrifying, mm. you know, because you're going to get judged, and everyone's tastes are different. But it's also very, very exciting, and it's so nice to get feedback. and And this is a real audience here at mm. PAX, and we can kind of tell, you know, when we come to, to PAX, uh, it was a turning point for Borderlands One. Really? Yeah. I mean, up at, up and even till the E3 in the same year that the game shipped, and we'd been, you know, on the road for two years with the game, mm. and it was really impossible to get attention for it. But we showed up to PAX for the first time with Borderlands, like a couple months before it shipped and the love that we got and you know we there were some rewards that we got and, and just but most of all just people wanted to try it and they were waiting in line for like sometimes two three hours mm. and then they get in line again and that was just like That's oh like man you know. i think maybe we yeah. might have something here i don't know so um and it, it's I, I can feel the energy here at pax so I, i'm really hoping but you never know i mean it's it's difficult. Entertainment is challenging hmm. because you know we all like things, but we can't be sure that the people we offer stuff to like things. So we just do the best we can, and we hope we, we make some people happy. That's Great. why we exist. And if people are here, of course, you can go check out Battleborn downstairs. Um, also, want to talk to you a little bit about Borderlands. Yeah. Um, how is the Tales of the Borderlands stuff? Been? Oh, it's so awesome! You know, Episode Four just launched, and I've been warning people that love Borderlands since Episode Two that Episode Four was really going to mess with people. And you know, sure enough. 
uh, everybody's going nuts for it. Some of the best reviews I've ever seen um, uh, Telltale earn for any of their games. Uh, so I'm really proud of, of their effort, and I'm really excited about what they've been doing with the franchise. Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but if you have not checked out Tales from the Borderlands, you definitely want to do it. I mean, it is canonical. And the final, the season finale, episode five, will be coming up. And Telltale will we'll talk about it soon. But if you think episode four <laughs> is a melter, uh, you know, I, I've read the script. Mm. You know, I was involved in the outlining of the game. And I think it's, I think it's going to melt some faces, man. I think, I think episode five is really going to is really going to be meaningful to people that love Borderlands. And, do, you, uh, do you think you're going to do a second season of it? Um, I, 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 we'll see. Would we'll you see. like to? I hope so. Yeah. I, I think I think Telltale's doing amazing work, and um, I, I I hope that they they have because I, I think there's a couple things. One, do fans want it? Mm. Two, do the create are the creators passionate about it? Yeah. And three, can we actually come up with something that may, would make it worth it if we build it? Do we have an i do we have ideas that Mm. That, that, that will be a worthy enterprise should we all go for it. And, um, and we, we haven't answered those questions yet. But I hope the answer to all of those questions is yes, because I, I'm having such a good time <laughs> in Tales from the Borderlands. Uh, it's so fun to play these games as a customer, mm. as opposed to oh, one yeah, of the creators, course. you yeah, know? Yeah. And so uh, I, I really want more. Cool. Um, uh, last guys, question yeah. uh, before uh, I let you go on your, your yeah. I know you've got a panel coming up in a little while. Bit of news broke this morning. Uh, something people have been hoping and crossing their fingers for for a long time. Uh, you guys have locked down. There is a Borderlands movie in the works. Yeah, the, there was an announcement this morning. Um, I, I, I'm actually going to be talking about this in more detail today. Um, at 4 p.m. in the main theater at PAX. All right, pretty soon, the, 90 minutes. Yeah, the, the, inside, uh, the inside Gearbox uh, panel. And if you go to the Gearbox website or the 2K website and look around, you'll probably find a link where you can watch it live if you're at home. Um, and it's going to start, and I got to get over there right after this. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go into some details about that. But that exists. The fact that there's that talent and those, that, those people, I mean, you're talking about the Arad, the, you know, Ari and Avi Arad, yeah. and you're talking about Lionsgate. These are some of the greatest filmmakers in the world. And for them to get involved, that's not from us. Mm. That's from the fans. Mm. The fans love Borderlands so much that they got behind it. And, and how cool was it? You know, I was talking earlier about how when we first started talking about Borderlands, it was hard for, to get attention, but some people got it. Mm. And those early adopters are the ones that kind of created that early momentum. How cool is it for those people that noticed us at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was there at the beginning, and right now there's people that can say that about Battleborn. There's people yeah. that are noticing Battleborn right now, and, and they're with us as we, as we try to build this thing and create this entirely new, crazy, insane thing that is just turning us on so much a Gearbox, and we're so thrilled, and, um, and we're going to be talking a lot about Battleborn cool. as well in our man, main theater panel at 4 p.m. Here at PAX, check on our website <laughs> at gearboxsoftware.com, and, and you can see how to watch it. Cool. All right, save your voice. You got a lot of talk. Yeah, right no, later. it's going to be fun. I'm going to do a magic trick, too. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I should have asked you to do one right now. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, Randy Pitcher from Gearbox Software. A pleasure, pleasure. man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Not at all. Pleasure. Awesome. Uh, and uh, thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, that's my bit done for today, actually. Uh, but Chris Waters is coming up. We've got a bunch more cool stuff coming up right here on the YouTube Gaming Show at PAX Prime. So stick around. We'll be back in a second.